What's happening, guys? Keith here with the debut episode of Turn Back the Clock. Uh, so Turn Back the Clock will be retro TNA reviews, and I'm going to start off by doing the first episode of Impact. Uh, so this episode was from June 4th, 2004. Um, what a fun episode. Um, so I believe this was the first show with the six-sided ring because they were using the four-sided ring on the Asylum pay-per-views previously. Um, we had Mike Tanay and Don West on commentary. So this was their first show at the Impact Zone in Orlando. Uh, so we opened the show with Team Canada, which consisted of Petey Williams, Bobby Roode, Eric Young, and Coach Damore versus Team International, which was Amazing Red, Sanjay Dutt, and Hector Garza. So Hector Garza is the uncle of current uh, Impact Wrestling star Garza Jr. Um, unfortunately, Hector had passed away back in 2013 due to lung cancer. Um, but I want to make a few notes here before we get into the match. Uh, I really liked what Fox Sportsnet did with the broadcast of Impact. Uh, so at the top of the screen, you had the name of the competitors in the match, and then you had a countdown timer, which if the match was set for 10 minutes, it would start at 10 minutes and count down. Um, and at the bottom of the screen, they had a ticker that would come up with past events, that uh, results that happened, and and I think there was some, one later on the show with a future event, but uh, I really thought this was innovative for... I think this was probably Fox Sports doing, but it uh, really treated the show like a sporting event rather than an entertaining show. Um, I feel like this is something that would be cool if they did bring back on their own, obviously, because, I mean, you have somebody flipping through the channels and all of a sudden they see a name that they recognize on top. They would be uh, more apt to stay and watch. But uh, back to the match. So the crowd was super hot for this opening contest. Um Commentators really hyped up the uh, six-sided ring, saying, you know, because there's so much more possibilities they can use the ring for. Uh, so we started off the match with some really high spots. Uh, Team International hit all of Team Canada with moves over the ropes. Uh, Team Canada did what they do best and, you know, had heel tactics going on, moves behind the referee. Scott Demore got involved. So the majority of the match, uh, Amazing Red was kept isolated to their side. Uh, Red is finally able to make a tag to Garza, Garza, um, I almost said Garza Jr., uh, all hell breaks loose, everybody's fighting all over the place, Red almost gets a three count on Eric Young, but I don't even think Red was the legal man, so, like, so much was going on that the referee even had, tre had problems keeping track of who the legal man was, but eventually Garza hit the twisting moonsault on Bobby Roode for the win, a uh, good way to open up the show, so I didn't mention, but when the show started, it was only an hour long. So they were still able to get three matches? No, four matches on the show. And uh, just really kept it jam-packed. Um, not like today, where shows tend to run a lot longer and you have a lot more filler. So up next, we have Abyss vs. Sharkboy. Uh, this was a very short match. Uh, Sharkboy got the upper hand early after Abyss went for a choke slam, and Sharkboy decided to bite his fingers. Um, but it did not last long after that, with Abyss finally getting the win about a minute later with the black hole slam. Thanks to the ticker, match lasted about a minute 30. Up next, we had a tag team title match where Kid Cash and Dallas, now known as Lance Hoyt or Lance Archer, uh, defended the ta their tag titles against America's Most Wanted, which was James Storm and Wildcat Chris Harris. Um, AMW started the match out really strong early on, but once the big man Dallas got involved, it was uh, they were able to get the upper hand. I think Dallas was billed at 6'9". Um, but they made note during this match that even if the champions are disqualified, they will lose the titles because in TNA, a loss is a loss. And I really liked that. I don't think they employ that now. Um, actually, I know they don't employ that now, but I think that was a really good feature. So you don't constantly have a champion getting counted out or disqualified or anything like that to retain the title. Um, 
So later, a little later on in the match, uh, Dallas and Cash are able to hit a combination, uh, I guess a blackout frog splash is what it was called, on James Storm. So uh, Harris comes in from the outside and hits Kid Cash with a spear. Dallas takes out Harris with a boot. Dallas goes to hit James Storm with a boot. Uh, Storm pulls down the rope. He gets uh, Hoyt. Dallas gets stuck on the top rope. Then Chris Harris comes in and rolls him up for a three count, and we have new tag team champions in AMW. So they made mention that next week on the uh, weekly pay-per-view that the fans would be able to vote who challenges AMW for the titles. So that was a pretty cool thing. So throughout the show, they talked about having a special judge on hand in case any match ended in a no contest or actually in a time limit draw, uh, so they would be able to choose a winner. Uh, Mike today, today is in the ring, and he introduces the one and only Dusty Rhodes. Uh, Dusty says tradition lives in TNA, and they talk about the history of the NWA title. They discuss the King of the Mountain match that had happened on the previous pay-per-view, which of course Jeff Jarrett won, and uh, when Jarrett's name was mentioned, there was a slew of boos from the audience. Um... So Dusty said that he thought Jeff Jarrett was all about tradition, but it seems like he's changed his ways for the almighty dollar. And of course, this leads Jarrett to come out. He asked Dusty what the hell he's doing here, because 20 years ago, he was in his twilight of his career. So he kind of threatens Dusty and tells him to get the hell out of there. He says, basically, I'm going to turn my back, and if I count to five and you're, or you're still here, I'm going to make you get out of here. So he turns around, Dusty starts beating him down, uh, Jarrett gets the upper hand, brings out the guitar, threatens to hit Dusty over the head, but Ron the Truth Killings comes out, uh, makes the save, but then ends up getting hit over the head with the guitar. Um, at this point, uh, BG James and Conan, other members of the Three Live crew with Ron Killings, uh, come out and make the save, and Jarrett runs off. So up next, we have a promo package hyping up the X Division, and they announced the main event for tonight, which is apparently a fatal four-way, um, and the winner will get a shot at Kazarian's X Division title at next week's Wednesday pay-per-view. Uh, so this next segment was a little odd. It was uh, Shane Douglas interviewing Vince Russo. Vince Russo is apparently the director of authority, uh, so... Shane starts out by saying, before Russo comes into the picture, that he's there to figure out who the four contestants in the X Division matchup are. So Russo walks up, and and Douglas says, all right, so we know who the three contestants are, but who is the fourth? I'm like, wait a second. He just said he had no idea who the contestants are. Why does he all of a sudden know three of the four? So weird spot. Um, Russo says... TNA is the land of opportunity. We know we've heard this recently on a certain company show. And uh, he says, four competitors came up to me, and uh, I made a match. You guys know who the three of them are. I know who the fourth one is, so let's find out. And it was just an odd interview. So we go to ringside, and we see Elix Skipper, Michael Shane, and Chris Sabin in the ring. So... There was AJ, Ch- AJ Styles' chants throughout the arena, and of course, AJ Styles is the fourth competitor, so they made a big deal about this, him being in an X Division uh, style match because he's a two-time former X Division champion, two-time tag team champion, and two-time NWA champion. I must give credit where credit is due. TNA definitely put a lot of stock into their most popular character, AJ Styles, and that I am very thankful for because I don't think we would get the AJ Styles of today had he not gone through any of this in TNA. Um, But the crowd was super hot for this match, and it was just nonstop action, which, what a surprise, because TNA was total nonstop action. Uh, We had a lot of near, near pinfalls in the match, which always got broken up by another competitor, uh, we did get to see Elix Skipper walk the top rope and hit Michael Shane with a Hurricane Rana that went to the outside. Action spilled to the outside. AJ Styles did a dive flip over the ropes, taking out, I think it was Skipper. Um, so inside the ring, Michael Shane and Chris Saban are battling. Uh, 
Saban throw, gets thrown into the ring post by Michael Sheen. AJ Styles gets up on the apron, jumps off the top rope, does a sunset flip onto Chris Saban, and then ca- turns it into a Styles clash, and he gets the win. Um, and he will face Kazarian at next week's pay-per-view. So like I said, this was a fun show to watch. Um, I truly feel like this was TNA's golden days. Everybody was looking for an alternative to a very stale WWE product. Um, Or I should say the beginning to a stale WWE product because they had a lot of down years. Um, But TNA went through a lot of ups and downs. And at this point, it looks like we're in for a lot of good things. Um, I've heard nothing but positive things about the Impact tapings, and I am so excited to see what is ahead. Um, so I would love to know what you guys thought of this review. Um, if you want to see more of it, maybe leave a comment below letting me know what uh, show you guys want me to review next, whether it be an Impact, an old Asylum pay-per-view, a regular TNA pay-per-view, Let me know. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.